appreciate it. I know you guys' time is valuable. But today we have a great program for you. It's George Morris. Some exciting stuff going on. Right? Woo! Um, so, a couple things coming up. For those of you who weren't here today and morning ascent, our listing contest is going to be starting on uh, the first of this next month. So, get into that. Let's be part of it. It was a lot of fun last time. We did a lot of good stuff. A lot of good things went on. Uh, Tony Robbins event coming up. Also next, next, ba next base camp next week, 10 o'clock in this room. We're going to have a Tony Robbins guy here speaking about what they do. So don't miss that. That's going to be. There's probably only going to be standing room because it's all of our, uh, all of our offices are going to be here. So we're going to finish up. How to win friends and influence people. So I don't see any of our partners here today. Am I missing somebody? Okay, anyway, our landing partners down on the first floor. You know, be with them, guys. They're great. A great part of what our business is and what we do with them. Great events that we're working on. So be part of that. And Brenda Lee, you won last time the contest. I am the big winner. Yes, isn't that great? You know how that went. How did you win? I just did my job. You did your job, right? <laughs> Add your numbers in. Guys, look, we have, a, we have a drawing each week also just for attending. So be part of that. So Chris, are we forgetting anything? Uh, no, you mentioned next month the listing contest. Yes. Okay. That's it. So, November 8th. November, November 8th, Tony Robbins. Mari yeah. is going. She's leading. Mari is going, we hear. Woo. So, woo, right? Yes. And part of that, yes. Great opportunities. Russ's classes, so those who are not attending Russ's classes, be part of that, guys. There's a lot of good information in there, uh, you know, with systems and strategies and techniques in which we teach. So, with that being said, let's turn it over to Mr. Morris. <laughs> All right, how's everybody doing? Good. It's good to be with you guys. I'm gonna grab a dry erase or a dry <laughs> marker here. Um, does anybody know the last time I've done a base camp? Dean, do you know the last time I've done a base camp? No, but it's been a while, but you've been in the sun, I can see that. You know what, you can keep saying that. <laughs> I, and you know what, I, I'm past the point to where I can't give any excuse. The answer is I have been. So it was, I, 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 spent, I spent two and a half weeks in Europe and it was scorching hot. Wow. Like it was, like, if, if this is the best example, I get into a cab in Barcelona, I get into the cab, it's the first cab we, I am dripping in sweat and the guy speaks pretty good English and he says, is that right when I sit down, he says, welcome to hell. <laughs> That is a true story. I mean, it was 95% degree, 95 degrees, 95% 95 humidity. It was unbelievably hot. And I forgot how hot it can be there during the uh, summers. And so, anyway, but we had a good time. My daughter was kind of her, well, not kind of, it was her graduation trip. And she uh, failed at not, sp she spent countless amounts of dollars on this trip. So it was good. She had, she, 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 she did not let uh, anything that could have been done, not be done. <laughs> so, yeah, but it was cool. If you haven't, by the way, if you haven't ever done that, it is really not that expensive of a trip, but it's the Mediterranean cruise that goes through uh, the Mediterranean, right, of course. <laughs> um, but uh, I went to some uh, cool places. And I've done it before, about three years ago, uh, with uh, Louis Hamner and uh, his wife, and we had a good time. But uh, if you haven't ever done that one, it is an amazing play time, just because you get to go see so many different countries. Uh, like, just even the history of uh, Gibraltar. I mean, that was incredible. I didn't realize how important uh, that uh, island frankly is. I mean, pretty pretty amazing history uh, as it's still owned by the Great Britain, even though Spain wants it back. So it's kind of a, an interesting an interesting place. So anyway, all right, so uh, good to be with you. And not only after, uh, did I do that, but I just got off the heels of on Monday uh, afternoon, I flew back from Vegas uh, and I had the opportunity to go to Business Mastery uh, of Tony Robbins. Has anybody done that ever? Has, I know there's been a handful. I don't, I don't think there's anybody in here who's done it. But that was a pretty amazing experience. And if you haven't done that, boy, I'd sure encourage you to, to do that. And I'm pretty uh, focused right now of getting as many people as I can to uh, uh, Tony Robbins. As you know, there's someone coming in to speak to us. And then we have on November 8th, the 11th, uh, I just bought my airline ticket yesterday. 
uh, and I hope that you'll go. And don't give me the reason, one, if you don't have money, that's the very reason you can't afford not to go. Number two, if you've been before, like Amaria tried to tell me, that doesn't matter either, because this will be my 11th time going. And so it'd be like, you know, it, it'd be, look, the, the mother, of, the, or repetition is the mother of skill. So if you want to elevate your skill sets in your personal life and your business life, I would just challenge you to make sure that you go. So um, you'll, meet, you'll meet Debbie Costa next week. And uh, look, it, it, it's, it's not, I mean, there is, you could say the rah-rah, but what it really is, is about perfecting the skill sets to improve your personal life and your business life. And uh, you know, last week I got to hear, some of you will know uh, Dana White, who was the, he was the president of the UFC. He took uh, UFC fighting from a $2 million company that was bankrupt, uh, burned about $41 million in the first uh, year and a half of the company, and then by the time it was said and done with a buddy of his who lent him the money, by the way, uh, turned it into, when he sold it, a $4 billion company, and they believe it to be, at some point, it will be the biggest sporting event and the most valuable sporting asset in the world. Uh, because there's not a single country that does not like it. Meaning that everyone under, I love what he said, he goes, everyone gets fighting. He made fun of like, look, cricket, baseball, football, soccer, and he made fun of every single one of them. And some countries love it, some people, some countries hate it. Like he said, how many of you know the number one cricket player? How many of you know the number one soccer player? And he kept you know, a group of 2,000, and it was a fascinating experience to watch that here was a guy losing at every angle of his business and all of a sudden resurrecting. How many of you use Waze, W-A-Z-E? You know, I use it all the time. Uh, if you don't, you should. But anyway, the uh, owners who created that, they were also interviewed on stage. So I've got, again, there's all of the, hey man, I want to feel good. But then there's also this whole other element of not just feel good, but using strategies and tools to be able to elevate your life. So it'll be good to see you. Mario there, Chris, you're going right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt's going to be a business mastery? Cody. Like Cody and Chase up, right? right? Matt's going to. So, pardon? Matt's going to. Are you gone? I am there. All right, good. <laughs> good. All right. Who's been to a Tony Robbins event? Okay, good. All right. Go more than once. Just for the, you know, that's just, that's my, that's my plug. So there you go. All right, so let, let's, uh, you know, it has been an interesting time. So I always believe there's like four, four markets. There's the markets that are going up. There's the markets that are going down. There's the markets that are transitioning. And there's the markets that are like flat or flatlined, right? And my observation is, is that um, the agents and the individuals, not only who are joining the organization, but it is an interesting time because what we're seeing is almost like there's there's almost a I almost want to say a regathering. Um, people who uh, who have left this organization are coming back to the organization, and what I find interesting is that what is it that they're attracted to? And it's the very reason I hope that you're in the room, and that is that it's the environment, the culture, which is often something that's overused. But the reality is is that you know you, you can't deny the fact that who you spend your time with and who you're around is who you become. So. Um, with that, I just want to remind you that not only do I have a responsibility stewardship to protect the environment, but, but so do you. And some of you, like from Jessica and Brenda Lee and others who have been here really essentially from the beginning, there's a reason why our average agent sells 11 and a half homes a year. And that may not seem like a lot, but when you take 500 agents across the Wasatch Front and down into St. George, it's a huge number from the standpoint of going, okay, why is that so uniquely different with so many different agents inside this organization? The average agent in this organization makes $85,000. So if you're not at least making 85 grand right now, then, then you're below average. And what that means to me is that you may not be participating in the very things that are there. So I remember years ago doing a talk at the Salt Lake Board of Realtors, and I remember talking about a, a, a formula of, of success specific to, it was specific to leads and lead generation and different things. But what I realized from that class in the class that I taught was it was really all about resources. And not that you're gonna volunteer unless you want to. Is there anybody who would consider themselves really lazy in the room? Really? All right, all right, a few of you. All right, all right. So you got some, some transparency. He's vulnerable, these two guys are vulnerable, that's good. 
All right? But my, my point is, is that in general, I, I would share with you, and this is, you know, maybe it's a kind of a coin phrase, but I just want to talk about being resourceful because my observation is, is that most people are really, as a general statement, are not lazy. It's just that they're not using the resources that are available to them and the things that they should be doing on a daily basis. So when you think about your, your career, when you think about all the things that are available to you, and again, I know you can't do everything, but I just would challenge you to ask yourself if you're really being resourceful, if you're doing the things that are necessary to win at this game. So just basic stuff. Resources like are you listening to the daily message? Are you attending some morning ascents? Are you showing up as you are in this room? Are you heading, you know, getting yourself to summits? Are you showing yourself up at some level of training? I don't care whether it's, you know, Mike Ferry, I don't care whether it's Tony Robbins, I don't care if it's something you said they go, man, this is what resonates for me. But are you making sure you're elevating your game? Because look, in the end of the day, it's simply this. The state of mind, emotion, and the body that you carry throughout this life, right? What you do every day with it, what you think about, what you feel, and how you act is going to end up being the results of your life. So do everything you can to protect that at the highest level. So, um, you know, I've had, I, 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 when I, because there had, it has been a bit, Dean, since I've been up here, if you would say, on a base camp, and not necessarily a summit where there's you know 300 people in the room, but to where it's a smaller crowd. One of the things that I always ask um, is simply, you know, what did you learn? And um, it's one of the questions that I consistently ask to to my to my children, and that is, what what have you learned? And I and I remember uh, asking this to my daughter Ashley, who's off to UCLA next month, and I remember I asked her. Uh, last week, because last week was her birthday, I said, what did you learn over the last year? And she said, I don't know. And I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? What did you actually learn over the last 12 months? And I said, I said, look, after in the morning, I said, by the end of the day, you better have thought about it, and I want to know what you have learned. And so, as, as the day went on, she then, I kept kind of like, I even sent her a text and said, hey, just so you know, I didn't forget. I'm going to ask you again, what did you learn over the last year? So when I spoke to her, she talked about the fact, she talked about some of the things in school, she talked about her personal life, she talked about some of these different things, and I still had to throw it at her. It was last night. Okay, so she is like, like this psychomathematic chemistry freak. Like, I mean, seriously. Like, so focused on school and I so this story has nothing really to do with it. it is so funny to me <laughs> so she's on what's called mutual.com whatever that is right probably some LDS site whatever it is you're doing something there. so she meets this guy called Tanner and she meets him before we go to Europe and they are like totally connected. They're like Jen walks out, walks out in the driveway. She's like, holy crap! They're like making out on top of each other. I mean, she's like, holy cow! Is being recorded, Russ? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> so, so she walks out, and she thinks that she, they saw her. Well, they, she didn't. So she then just walks right by, and she's like looking like they are like totally into it. She's like, oh my gosh. Because like, here's the deal. My daughter essentially did not date whatsoever in high school. And she's a cute little thing, but she just is like, like everyone who meets her like, oh wow, you're a cute nerd. Like she's kind of like, 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 like she's, but she didn't date like at all. Like man, she was just like school. And, and so then that happens, okay? So here's the best part about this whole thing. That isn't even the funny part, Matt. That is not even the best part of the whole thing. So then, he does not. He like like goes like completely silent on the trip, and I and you know Jen's like sitting there, and I'm sitting there. Oh, you'll be fine. You know he's probably you know she's on Sprint, which is not a real good international kind of deal. You can't use <laughs> uh, you can't use your phone real well. So she get on Wi-Fi, but there'd be no texting going back and forth. But Aaliyah, like totally like dead, like dead to the world. Still has not texted her. But this is the best part. She gets on mutual. Uh, dot com, she gets on there again, and she's like interacting and wow, swipe up, swipe down, whatever people do on these things. So whatever, she meets this other guy. Oh, okay, this is fine. And this guy's name is Jeremiah. 
All right? <laughs> the classic is they go out, and then she looks closely, and he posts a picture. And guess who the picture is with? His best friend. Oh, no. This is true, His oh, best friend. friend. It's Tanner. Oh, it gets better. It gets so much better. Oh my God. So, so I'm up seriously. So he, so, so, so now they finally figure out, and all of a sudden he's on seek like their second date. She has not let him know, like that this is like, like there's this thing, and all of a sudden he is, she knows he is on his way to his house after their date, and he calls, and the Bluetooth comes on on the phone, and she is listening to Tanner. And to Jeremiah Sue, and he doesn't know she's there, and she he says, "Oh, it's working so good." I go, so how was it? And he, long pause, and she says, "He, he or sorry, he, he says she's still in the car." And then, and he's like, "Oh, uh, okay, well, all right." So he, he like went totally silent, hasn't spoken to her. Still gets better. So last night, I go to the gym. I go to the gym and I, I meet this guy Jeremiah, and I'm in my workout clothes. Of course, I'm like pumped up, standing over him. <laughs> I go on, take care of my daughter, like I love to intimidate anyone who dates my daughters. And and, and in fact, Dylan was there. He goes, "Oh man," he goes, "I was so scared of you." He's like you are so intimidating when you do what you do. And, he, and I go, "I go." What he goes, "You don't talk." You stare at me and you get really in my space. <laughs> and so, anyway, so I did this to him last night. So then I come home after the gym and I walk through the door and I'm not kidding you. They are both laying on the couch, watching a movie, holding each other, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" I didn't say, and I came right over and like this. I'm like, so how are you guys doing? I mean, I was like, right over, right? And, and, and so they kept doing their thing. So this is classic, though. So I'm getting a glass of water. And I forget that I'm thinking Tanner. So I say, <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's really happened. I just want to say this is the best part of the whole story. And I say, because my questions are always about capitalism, Republican, Democrat, what's about free enterprise, what's your political position in regards to you know, to to, uh, to uh, same-sex marriage and your position in regards to uh, um, uh, free speech in regards to I always love to hear what people's take is in regards to free speech and their and their position on uh, the uh, uh, pro-choice, pro-life. All right. So I start off, Aldana, with this, and I say, "So Tanner." Oh, oh, oh. And, and I go, "Oh my God!" And I hear, I hear Ashley go, uh, "It's Jeremiah." <laughs> and so we had a little conversation, I, and then I started going through this whole process, and then uh, asked him all these questions, and he answered pretty good. I was pretty impressed by that. Wow. Actually, he's a pretty sharp kid. So anyway. So, I don't know why I told you that story, but I've been aching to tell someone that. <laughs> so, all of you, so it was awesome. So, um, the whole point, I don't even know what the point of that was, Angel, but I, all I know is that communication is key and getting people's names is right, is part, and part of that process. Um, and, and you have a tanner. In fact, when I heard tanner, I was thinking, you're tanner for a minute. So, anyway, um, all right, so my whole point is I have no idea, but we're gonna keep going. And it is about communication, and it is about our, oh yeah, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about being resourceful, right? So what, my, my whole thing and what you learned. So today for me, what I thought about was just simply this. What, what can I share with you? What can I talk about that you sit there and go, okay, you know what, that was a great takeaway, and I'm able to implement something, execute upon something, be part of something, because you used a resource that the organization has. and. I would just go back to that same question that I always ask any of my children, and that is, what did you learn since the last time I saw you? Now, I didn't come up with that. It was actually Mike Ferry, and I have to tell you, Mike Ferry asks me the same question every time I see him. What was the thing? What have you learned since the last time you and I spoke? And it has always impacted me to recognize that I have to simply be on this quest, this journey, this thirst, this hunger, to constantly wanting to learn something, to create something, to be more than I was. And I have this deep belief, and you've certainly heard it from many different sources, but I would simply say that if you want to truly be happy, that you have to progress. And if you progress, I can promise you there will be great happiness in that. If you regress, I can promise you you will be very unhappy. But if you're progressing in your life, 
And although you may say I'm losing, what I would challenge you to do is to reframe that to the standpoint of the fact that you are really learning something. And if you've learned something, did you really lose? Now you may say, well, wait, but I lost money. Well, yeah, but did you learn something from it? Right? I remember when I was, just last week when I was at the Tony Robbins event, he had, he had a really nice event. How many of you have lost more than 100,000, 200,000? You know, and they got up to a million. How many of you have lost over a million dollars? And I was still holding my hand up. I had some really ruthless moments of my life and I sit back and went, whoa. And then the people around me, no one was, I realized no one was raising my hand as he got up to bigger numbers. And I realized, man, I have lost a lot of money. But the reality is, is that if I hadn't lost the money, I wouldn't know how to make money, right? And I just would hear, I'm here to tell you that, um, look, here's a good example, here's a good point for you. Eight out of every 10 millionaires, guess what they filed? Bankruptcy. I'm just here to tell you that your past doesn't ever equal your future. And the thing that you have to recognize is that if you really want to excel in life, you have to realize that your disciplines and what you do every day, willpower will fail you, discipline will fail you, but your reasons for what you want will not. And if you can put the thread and the emotion of the reasons why you do things and the reasons that drive your life, I can promise you that you will never stop. And you will stop at nothing to get it. Nothing. You will, there will be nothing that can stop the freight train of your goals and your dreams because you have enough reasons that are intertwined and wrapped and woven through the processes of what you're doing. Years ago when I sat down with Robert Fillmore, and Robert Fillmore was one of, he was my, I guess he would have been my third broker in like three years. And Robert Fillmore owned Realty Executives where I met a handful of you from Belladonna and others, right? And, and, I, and, and I remember when, when Robert would coach me we would sit down and as we would sit down he would talk about all of these different dynamics of business but there was always some specific questions that he would always want to know from me and the questions that he would want to know were questions that were real simple am I exercising he would ask me what am I reading he would ask me what am I listening to he would ask me who am I spending my time with he would ask me questions that I knew were there to make sure I was aware of how am I formulating the right mindset and the right belief systems. What I found interesting last week with even Tony is he took a step back and got real, I almost want to say real, real. That it wasn't a script, it wasn't a dialogue. You could tell he was just simply talking from his heart. And he was talking about the dynamics of his life and how you know bad things have been, had been at one point. I mean, give, give you a perspective. Like, the, think about the talent of Tony Robbins, okay? But just, like he said, just last year, now think about this, the talent, the millions of dollars, the things that he had created, everything that he had done, everything. He ended up, when he got divorced 19 years ago, he paid an 11 times multiplier on his divorce of every one of his companies that no way, if he wasn't there, they would be worth nothing. He had to pay her $220 million, his ex-wife. He also had a 19-year, $1 million a year. You know what's inter interesting, Linda? Is Hold that he on. said... He had paid her yearly on... A one, oh, and then $1 million a year for 19 straight years and $220, and $220 million. <laughs> And he got like really like ch I mean like it, it was and I and I've said this to a few people that it's I heard him talk about his divorce but not to the detail that he had talked about it this time I heard him talk about it but he talked about the economics and he talked about and here's what I found interesting just last year he said he made his final payment he said just last year he was eight nine months ago he was I made my last payment and I thought man that's fascinating here is this icon of talent, right? This, 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 this guy who is unbelievably talented, bringing people to a higher place in life, and yet even he himself is, has life's challenges and has the moments. And so in those moments I was listening to him, he then went on to talk about these things. He talked about how simple as it is. He goes, what brought me out of the depths of hell was I opened up my journal and I just started writing down where I was going. And what was my destination? So when I look and say, like, what did I learn? What have I learned over the last year? And look, frankly, even though I didn't say it, 
Gang, it's been almost a year, so I've done morning meetings, but it's been a year since I've done a base camp. Um, as a side note, I would just tell you that every single day that has gone by, especially over the last six months, um, there has been a much better settling. If I could tell you um, the last two and a half years, of all the years of building this company, the last two and a half years has unquestionably been the most difficult and challenging years of the company. And what actually has been the highlight is actually what you guys are doing. Because there was so many challenges that were going on in regards to California and all the different things we were doing and just building all this infrastructure and building all these platforms and building all these different things. And what has been interesting is that, not that they're all done, but I can tell you internally, I feel like this settling, like that I'm grounded. Even the fact that I can stand in one place. I mean, it seems like silly, but like that I'm not wandering all over a stage and I can stand somewhere because I feel grounded because of this, of where and what the company is. But, but in that process, if I look at my last two and a half years or I look at what Tony talked about, I just want to repeat those again, right? And, and I, as he spoke, he started talking about his journal. Well, I looked at the last month of my journal and I have pretty much filled up an entire journal over the last month. I have written pages upon pages upon pages upon pages in different angles of my life. And different angles regarding whether it be my health, whether it be my relationships, whether it be any part of a relationship. I'm talking the relationship with myself, my relationship with a higher power, my relationship in my marriage, a relationship intimately, my relationship as a, as a father, and my relationship really as CEO and a leader or an entrepreneur or whatever you want to call me in, in business. But through that whole process, you know, what I've, what I've got, gathered from that is that in the most difficult moments as I have reflected over this last month for my own life, and I know that you can relate because I know that you guys, most of you have heard this from me, but I know this, man. I know it. I, I think I said it even yesterday, that I know that that the majority of you, like I usually say, hey, look, if you treat everybody you meet as if they are going through the most difficult moments of their life, you will be right more than 50% of the time. But I am conclusive that I believe it is at minimum three out of four. I think the number is far higher. I think that there, if I take 75% of this group right here, right now, that there is major chaos in a relationship there is maybe maybe major chaos, something really heinous in regards to your health. Maybe there's something really, really tough in regards to your economics and your money. But I'm telling you that three out of four people, now think about that when you go on a listing appointment. Think about that when the four people that you talk to on the phone, that three of them are going through the most difficult moments of their life. And you're going to be right. If you treat them that way, you're going to be right more than three out of four times. And so my observations, I listen to Tony, as I listen to, to my own self, if you would say, as I write, is that the most important thing that I have realized in my journey is that I have to express myself. And if I don't express myself some way, somehow, in a productive way, meaning not that I'm yelling, screaming, shouting at people, but that I'm writing in my journal, it is where I keep score. It is where I, I, I love the statement of Jim Rohn. He says... If your life is worth living, it is worth recording. And so fundamentally for me, what I have found in some of the most difficult moments is that what I know to be true is I found myself in these last few years not writing in my journal, which was crazy. Nuts! Like, what am I doing? I know that. Like, Heather, if you sat down with me, I'd be like, have you written in your journal? And I usually am the guy who can sit with you, Mike, and say, I'm never going to ask you to do something that I'm not doing. And then I found myself in these last two and a half years hardly writing in my journal. And so I just am here to tell you that that I would tell you what I've learned. I would tell you that I have become fanatical, again, about making sure that I'm writing in my journal. Because I recognize that the power of my journal is based on this. It's based on the questions that I ask and the answers that I give. And I love, again, I'm not, you know, of course I'm on the Tony Robbins thing here today, but, but I love the fact that if you don't like the answers, then maybe you should be asking better questions, right? Not why is my life, maybe there's better things to ask yourself that are maybe more productive like what and how, right? So that you can ask yourself questions that can give a resolve 
and a roadmap and a direction and, and, and a pathway for the way you want your life to be. So, one, writing in your journal. And that was interesting. That is exactly what Tony Robbins said. He said, I had to pull out my journal and I had to resell myself on what I'm capable of. <coughs> Number two, and I went through a few of those, but I just would challenge you as to what you're reading. This seems so crazy, but I would just tell you that in the last two and a half years, I, I am, again, one of those guys who is like, I am, you know, Paul, I am going to read. I'm so burned out. I am so tired. I can't believe I'm still here working. More purposeful. Every contract, every contact, every presentation, everything will mean more because there is a reason that is fastened right next to it. And it becomes much, much more fun. So they kind of just listen to anything. Like I'll just jump on YouTube aimlessly and say, oh, what comes up? And it's like doing AI, like artificial intelligence and saying, oh, you need to listen to this next. And I listen to it. And I'm just here to tell you that I want to listen to things that I know will inspire me and will move me into action. And I also would ask you and challenge you to ask yourself, are you listening to things that do empower you, that uplift you, that build you. And and if there's anything I've done over the last two years, that one I have done. The other things I would ask you is this, is, you know, who are you spending your time with? You know, I, I think that sometimes we get so strong or we may be doing so well or we have success or we have good things that happen that somehow we forget that who we spend our time with is legitimately who we become. And I would just challenge you, I can give you example after example of moments where I've created these relationships and I can tell you that you can create them if you want them. But you have to be very deliberate as to what you want your relationships to be. Right? Who would be who are going to be some of your mentors? Who will be some of your coaches? Who will be some of the people that you may just run with and roll with and have fun with and be able to associate with? You know, it's often been said, look, if, if you're the one earning the most money in your group of friends, that's probably problematic. Because the fact is, is that they say, what, some, there's some studies that say, say, show me five people and your five closest friends and you'll be somewhere within you know, a few hundred bucks or a few thousand bucks of their income. There's another one I just recently read that showed me that nine out of ten, uh, if you if you're the tenth, meaning if you uh, the ten people you spend time with collectively, you're going to be earning the equivalent of what they're earning, meaning the, their average. And if they're earning enough, then that's great. But I just again would challenge you that you have to be very conscious and aware as to who you're spending your time with. I used to find myself to where I got to a point to where I remember, and I've had friends where I'm like, oh my gosh, they spent time with that person again, and I can feel who they are when they spend that time with that person. I found over the years that, I even got to the point years ago where I was so weak and would be influenced so quickly that I couldn't even spend time with my own family. And I'm not talking to my kids, I'm talking to my immediate family, like my brothers, <coughs> my sisters. And it was so poisonous that when I'd show up, I would walk out wanting to like tear someone's face off <laughs> because I was so agitated and irritated. I mean, half the problems that I find with agents, half the problems of the holidays, isn't the holiday itself. It's the fact they have to go get with people, be with people, spend time with people that they never want to be with. And then they all of a sudden become a crackhead in regards to their emotion because they go spend time with all these people they don't even want to be with. Right? There you go. So again, you know what? Maybe all of your families are amazing and you know what? I'm preaching to the choir, but I would just challenge you to be very aware. Again, I don't care whether it's family, I don't care if it's your most important intimate relationship. I don't care if it's your own children, if it's your friends. Get serious about who you spend your time with. Adding to the fact that you should be having mentors and coaches and people that elevate your life on a daily basis. And look, the, the, all of this is just a recipe. The thing is, is if you want the success that you want your life to have economically in your health and your relationship, you just simply have to take a step back. Okay, where am I going? What are my reasons? All right, now what is my plan? And how resourceful will I be? What will I read? What will I listen to? Who will I spend my time with, right? 
And then other things for me that I've looked back and gone, man, what have I learned that has impacted me? Frankly, it sounds maybe kind of bad, but the question is, is what has impacted me negatively? And one of the things I've realized is that it's a lot of what I either do or don't watch. And what I mean by that is, are we watching things? Are we seeing things that elevate us to a whole other level of this life? So I think you kind of get the point where I move through the skill sets and all the different things that are there. And you could add in visualization, meditation, exercise. You could add in all these other things. But I'm here to tell you, I promise you, that if your mindset is not right, if the state of mind, emotion, and your physical stature, your, 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 how you literally physically are acting, if they are not in alignment, almost all of it comes down to how are you feeding your mind. Okay? So, with that, I want to talk about just a, a, a few things. How many of you are making enough money? Perfect. <laughs> all right. Great answer. How many of you want to earn more money? Right? I mean, how many? Right. Everybody, right? And I, I, if, if I was to sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and I was to ask you, okay, you want to earn more money, why? What reasons would you give me? And are they compelling enough to you that you drive and you move your life in a fashion and a way that is like literally unstoppable because of it? And for me, I look back in the many years of this business and I look back and I, I want to write this up here, but I look back and I sit there and go, you know, in my worst moments, my best moments, what was it that I was doing? And I always, you know, my, my, one of my favorite things to do is to look at this foundation that so many of you have seen over the years, but I just want to remind you that if you can't quickly come to the reasons as to why it is that you drive your life, the reasons that you wake up, the reasons that you are excited, the reasons that you do what you do, and I can use other words up here, right? Like, what is your greatest desire? What is your destination? Right? What is your, so many people, what is your why? Right? Uh, whatever it is, that, however, whatever word resonates for you, but I'm just here to tell you that you have to drive your life with that if you want to have ultimately the success that you need and deserve. But then followed up with, of course, the, what do you do with your time? I just want you to reflect on it. You don't even need to write it down, but just the question. And then what are you finding is your biggest challenges? Those three questions, if you sat down with me in a, in, in, a, in a coaching session, I would be asking those things. What do you want? What are your challenges? What are your time? And I weave them all back and forth together. Getting to the fact of what do you want and why, and getting to the fact of what do you do with your time? When do you wake up? When do you prospect? When do you talk to people? How many hours are you working? Is, is real estate a pastime, a hobby? Is it a real job? And what are you finding is your greatest challenges? And how are you going to solve them? Nothing in this business you cannot learn. And there's nothing about this business you cannot do. And some of you have done some pretty extraordinary things in this business, but I'm here to tell you that if you don't know what you want and you don't know what you do with your time and you aren't even aware of the challenges that you have, I would just tell you that you're just kind of wandering through this business. And you're the agent who does 10, 12 deals, 15, maybe 18 deals a year, and you may be having a good year, and it might be your best year ever, but I can promise you, you could do far more than you're already doing if you will understand what you want, even back it up with the why, know what you're doing with your time, and then know what your greatest challenges are, and begin to solve them. Fundamentally, for, for every agent, it is interesting to me that, that the very things that will solve the problems, so think about this, the more people you talk to, the more money you will earn. And the question you have to ask yourself is, how many people are you talking to? And I don't care the source. I don't care whether it's from an internet lead, a sign call, or for sale by honor, an expired, a just listed, a a uh, sphere of influence I'm talking to the people the challenge is is that we do two things in this business we make enough money to get by then we make just enough to where we feel secure and then we back down and then we go through this cycle this crazy eight we go back to oh my gosh what am I gonna do prospect 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 get a few deals get just an edge above survival and then we go back down again and go and we just keep the cycle going over and over again 
So if you've ever found yourself in that cycle, I remember years ago where I remember I could look at a board, a dry erase board, and it said January, three deals. February, zero deals. March, three deals. April, zero deals. May, three deals. June, this is true, zero deals. What was fascinating to me, and that was way, that was actually my second year in the business when I had that dry erase board or 20 deals. So that recognize their true potential and what really is possible and what really you are capable of doing. And as you start to recognize, you start seeing like, man, what is this foundation that I could build and what is it that could happen in regards to building my business and building the arsenal, this foundation, this... Try to do a little bit on everything and then nothing gets done. Okay. As opposed to just knocking out... The inventory, mortgage programs, lack of inventory, rates are going up. Problem, 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 problem. Or they focus on the goal, which you say, man, but goals are good. Shouldn't you focus on it? Yes, but not to a crippling point. My observation is, is that when you talk about the plan neglect, is that if you take the big goal and you said within a 24-hour period of time, every single one of them went and just went, gone. And I remember the next morning, I'm standing there prospecting, and I hear this behind me. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah? And some of you know him. It was Jason Erskine, of all people. Some of you know that guy. Yes. And Jason stood behind me. And he's like, I can't believe you're prospecting. And I said, well, what do you mean you can't believe I'm prospecting? He goes, you just lost, I remember it with a number, you just lost $95,000 worth of income. And you're here prospecting. And what I realized, I don't know, it was something that clicked at that moment. That, and not at that moment, actually before that that I realized it didn't matter what, if everything was good, I was gonna make the two appointments. If everything was horrible, I was gonna make the two appointments. And I didn't waver from those two appointments. And I still remember to this day, where I remember uh, Jennifer uh, at a stoplight, looking at me and said, um, can, I have a, can, I, can, I, can I ask you a question? Sure. And she said, you know, you're making so much money and you've never made that much money before and I just, I just need to ask you, and it didn't help that one of our close friends was in jail for fraud, insurance fraud, so <laughs> that's what was happening at the time. And I, she goes, I just need to know, um, are you doing this legally? And that's a true story. And, and, and what, what all that changed for me, Belladonna, was the fact that I was just, didn't matter whether it was a good day or a bad day, no matter what, I would do that. So I think you're totally right when you said the words plan neglect, because I've used that for a lot of years. And the thing is, is that, that when you start looking at this, that if you wanted to do 100 homes, if you set two listings a day, it would happen. I know that for a fact. Right, I, mean, I was talking to Brian Burnett last week down in St. George, and as I was talking to him, I asked him how much is he on track for? He's on track for like $1.6 million. And he said, hey, now help me. He goes, I don't want to work Saturdays anymore at all. And I said, okay, let's talk about it. But you want to know what, here, here, here he is. When I met him, he was making about, well, I met him well before that, but when he joined the company, he was making about half a million bucks. And, and when I met him, uh, my son-in-law asked, yeah. Were you like like amazingly impressed, like psychotically? Oh my gosh, this guy's amazing. I'm not saying he's not bad, but but here's what's interesting. I mean, Andrew, when you went to saw him, were you like like over the top impressed? No, he just other than he's just on the phone. Yeah, he doesn't. Right, so that's why we say all morals, all stories come down to one thing, which is what. Talk Good. At least three of you are finally getting my message. That's perfect. All right. But but I mean, what's interesting is you know here he is. He just had his fifth kid, um, and all that matters in a day, well, on from him, is that he sets two appointments a day, and the rest of it works out. He recently hired two buyers agents. Just <coughs> recently, like in the last two months, but for all intents and purposes, he's been doing everything on his own and doing his own thing. And all it is is that he prospects, look, he, he prospects from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. If he has a little bit more time, he might prospect a little bit, maybe from 2 to 4. He tries to have one appointment a day, and the rest of it works out. His objective is to list 20 homes a month. He sets two appointments a day. I'm going to show you the math. 
And if all you did in a day is set one or two appointments a day for a listing, you're going to do 50 to 100 transactions a year. And your life's going to be pretty simple. And you're going to make a lot of money. But you have to be committed to saying, look, from a time management standpoint, right, what am I going to do during the day? And most of the things, look, I look at this entire organization. The entire organization was built on just simply one principle, set one recruiting appointment a day. And everything works out if you do that. And everything works out if you set one listing appointment a day. And if you do that five days a week, and if you're not good enough because you don't have the skill sets yet, right, to even convert the listing, then take people with you who can. Take the people who make a ton of money like Justin in the back and Brian and Jessica and others that are in this company. Because they make a ton of money. But you know what? I still remember, because I've been doing this now a long, you know, long time, Justin and Brian and Jessica. I remember where they were. And I remember a Jessica standing in a hallway, still shake my head to this, going, I can't believe she came over here and stood in a hallway and worked here. That was when we were over on 1300 East. There's a video that's coming out. We're doing kind of a culture video, Jess, of where we're like kind of like showing the history of like where we were and where we are today. And it was pretty, I, in fact, I was in the other room and I mean, I could not hold it together, Justin. It was, you had done, I think yeah, later that day, you were with Isaac who was doing the, the video. I couldn't hold it together because they started asking me these questions. I felt like I was on, it was like Oprah interviewing me. <laughs> they started asking me these questions like, well, tell us about the journey of, you know, they gave all these specific questions about the journey. And man, I realized like my heartstrings are all wrapped around that because man, it bought full force, man, the pain. Right? The other thing about time management for me, Bill Donna, is simply this, and it is, I still remember walking up those stairs over on 1300 East, right over here uh, in these office condos. And I remember, I used to always say, man, I can do, if there, I can do anything for 90 days. Man, every cell in your body converts, it's new. You can do anything for 90 days. I used to say that all the time. And then, and then I realized that, man, I can't even do this for 90 days. I don't even have enough vision to see 90 days. My gosh, I mean, every time I turn the corner, someone's telling me, you're gonna be out of business, you're gonna be out of business, you're not gonna make it, who do you think you are? Who are you, what are you doing? And every time I turn the corner, someone, something, or something really negative was happening. And I still remember, I mean, I can't do anything for 90 days. I'm like, you know what, okay, I can wrap my brain around 30 days. I can do this for 30 days. I can last for 30 days. And then it got to a point where I was able to like, look at that and go, yeah, no not even 30 days. And I, it got so bad, guys, where I could get to, uh, to 30 days, to where I got to, okay, I can do this for the week. And it was so painful, because you know what? This is like where I talk about, this company, this, this process is about working on the inside of you. You can get all the leads in the world, that's on the outside. But no one seems to want to talk about the inside. The reason why I like want you to go to like a Tony Robbins, the reason why I want you to work on your mindset, the reason why I want is because so much of what you want to accomplish is about what you're doing on the inside. It has nothing to do with what the market's doing. It has nothing to do with what other agents are doing. And so it got for me to a point over there at that time where I, oh my gosh, I, I remember now walking up the stairs and I got to the point where I, okay, I can do this for the day. And it got so painful. It was so excruciating on my insides to where I remember I got to the point to where I can do this for the morning. And then I would reset and I would say, okay, I can do this for the afternoon. I can see myself for at least three hours doing what I need to do. So for me, part of time management, which may seem strange, but for part of it was to be able to see myself what I was able to do. And sometimes we sit there and go, oh my gosh, can I prospect every day for the next 365 days? Or could you just see yourself this morning, every morning reminding yourself, you know what, just what if I just did two solid hours, two solid hours of prospecting? What if I set two solid appointments? Everything else would come together. We often get into the habit of delegating everything that we do. I'll close with this. I think you can relate to this. There's three types of business people. There's what they will call the artist, they will call the leader slash manager, and there is the entrepreneur. And I don't know how to spell it, so that's as far as I can go. <laughs> I can't do that. Okay? 
Three types of what? Leaders, right, in business. Let me just give you an example. So an artist is like a creator, often it's the salesperson. So let's take this. If you were to take, if you were to take these three, let me give you three people, and you tell me who, and it, does, it, okay, like, back up. does everybody know who Stephen Curry is? Yes. Like some yes. people still like it. Yes, who is he? Basketball. He's one of the greatest basketball players of all time, right? He's the guy who shoots from half court. It's crazy what he does. Like, man, he is everywhere doing everything. He's an incredible basketball player. Okay? Does everybody know who Steve Kerr is? Yes. yes. Who is Steve Kerr? The He's the coach of who? Warriors. The Golden State Warriors. And who knows who Peter Goober is? Former CEO of Sony. Huge acquisition and bringing TriStar and all these different companies together. Made a fortune. Came out with hundreds of millions of dollars. And is like a serial entrepreneur, and he is actually the owner of the Golden State Warriors. Bought it for four hundred million dollars, by the way. Its price, its value today, is over six billion dollars. <coughs> is what they believe the Golden State Warriors are worth. Okay. So here's try this on just for a second. Stephen Curry, artist, leader, or entrepreneur? Artist. 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 Okay. So let's think about that, right? So are you going to see Stephen Curry back in the back office, general office, going, hey, let's talk about popcorn sales, and let's make sure that beer sales are really up. Yep. Is he going to be doing that? No. But is he, how much do, will he make this year, by the way, do you know? $36 million. Here's what's interesting for being an artist. And some of you are so committed to not being the artist, because I found myself in that same space. Because the fact is, is that as much as I can tell you that I'm a great entrepreneur, as much as I can tell you I'm a great leader, where do you think my heart and soul is? It's in the artistry of this business. It's in coaching, training, speaking, elevating, giving my heart and my soul to people, to helping them to become better. It's the reason there's this whole, like people talk about, we're talking about yesterday at our leadership meeting, and we're talking about like people, he said, like, this is like a cult. Yeah! A damn good one. Like, that's the goal. Like, you're not going to actually drink cyanide and die. You actually make money. It's a novel idea. Right? I mean, my point is, is that, like, there's this artistry. But the thing is, is some of you in this room are that person. You're doing everything you can to not be that person. And it's like, man, but that's where your heart and soul is. Kind of interesting to think about. The leader, the manager, who is it on the Golden State Warriors? Steve Kerr, right? He's your ops guy, your operations guy, your person that you're wrapping everything around, right? And the thing that's interesting about this is that this isn't about, the, every organization needs these people. Just the question is, is it you? Just think about it. Is that the person? It doesn't mean you couldn't do it really well. It just means is it supposed to be you? And then we take on this last, this entrepreneur, and one of the classifications of being a great, uh, or being an entrepreneur, is you're willing to take high level risks, right? You're willing to put everything on the line. Well, yes, many of you in this room are doing things like that. But in the example of the Golden State Warriors, Peter Goober, who bought the Golden State Warriors, he's not gonna be the guy discussing, you know, ticket sales. That's what his present leader's doing. So one of the things that I can promise you that I have had a real awakening of on a personal level is that I'm going to spend my time doing what I love to do. Bless you. What I love to do, which is to create, to be an artist, to be with the people. And for so many years of my life, I have found myself <coughs> almost wanting to try to fight that reality and be the entrepreneur, be the leader. And yes, I can be all of that, but the reality is, is what am I best at? And not even, like, here's what's even more interesting. You might not even think that's what I'm best at, but I will tell you this, it is what feeds my soul. And you, every one of you in here, has the right and the responsibility to create a pathway of happiness for your life. And my observation is, is that I watch, as I've watched in my own life over the years, is there's those moments where we fight our true nature of who we really are. And it doesn't mean that you can't be a great real estate agent. It doesn't mean you can't be a great leader, entrepreneur, or an artist. But the fact is, is that I would just challenge you to go after 
and to live your life in alignment with who you are and live a life that you look back and go, you know what, I love what I do. I love the days. I don't sit there and dread the moments of what I do because I'm living out who I am. Some of you are so excited about the management of a file and a deal <laughs> and yet the reality is is that it doesn't mean that doesn't need to be done but you fart f f you you fight this artistic <laughs> talent you fart around with what I'm saying fart. <laughs> you fart around with like just doing stuff you shouldn't even be doing Pardon you fart. Okay. but the good news is it's all being recorded right, right? <laughs> it's all on okay. record so just look, as you go through your life, you look, you know, you could sit there and say, well, yeah, there's the color codes and the disk formulas and everything else, but I just would challenge you to try to not fight the very things that bring the greatest amount of life and the greatest amount of breath, breath to your life and to who you are and what you want your life to be. And my observation is, is that people so often fight their greatest and most best tools and their nature of who they are because somehow someone told them that that's how it's supposed to be. And typically, who someone who told them how it's supposed to be is someone who was maybe a leader and said, well, you need to be this person. I just would challenge you to look at your greatest tools and your greatest abilities and follow your greatest love. And you know what? If you master that and you create that, you will make a fortune because your joy of your life will bring it to you. There's nothing in this business that I don't care whether you're on the leadership side, if that makes sense, on the on the on the, uh, the 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 company side or the agent side. Let's just divide it that way. There's there's nothing about each side that you can't make an enormous amount of money. You just, it the, the 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 restrictions of earning money if you're one of the on the leadership team or even as an agent is really the restriction is becoming a master of your craft. The first time I heard that was even from Justin. He said, know your craft. And the thing is, is that I don't believe that you can really know your craft at any level until at minimum, at minimum, 10 years. I, and, and, I've, and I've thought about that. I've thought, you know, Everest is in existence now for nine and a half years. And I've been in this business for 24. And I sit back and I think to myself, do I really know what I'm doing yet? And I would challenge you with the idea that yes, at some level, but I also would tell you that this, uh, I, now I promise you I'll close, but look, this is the deal. <laughs> this is the scary part. Take that whole circle and that's your life. One piece of that pie is the things that you know, that you know, like you know I know this. Like I know like certain parts of this business. And then there's this other part of this business, like well, wait, I know that I don't know this. Like, I don't know that. But you know the scariest part about life, if you'd say, I don't know if it's scary, but the, based the realities of life, the rest of that pie is comprised of this. What you don't know, that you don't know that you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's called a black swan. Yeah? Is it? It's the stuff that you don't know, that you don't even know, that you don't know. And so, that's why you should walk through life teachable, open, willing to learn, you know, keeping your ego in check so that you can somehow figure this other portion out to where an awakening, enlightenment, a consciousness comes into your life because you become more because of the openness that you bring to it because, in so many words, you don't have it all figured out. I just would challenge you to keep an open attitude. I would challenge you to keep a very teachable approach to your life. Remain coachable, teachable. The beauty of you being here is I'm always very appreciative that you're here. And it, it is, seriously, it is, it is an honor to serve with you and be with you and be a part of your lives. I, I, uh, I, I have recognized, especially over these last few years, the magnitude, really specifically, the magnitude of importance this specific office has to me. It, this, this, this Union Park office um, has been the healing agent for many parts of my life. 
and it also has been the awakening of many parts of my life. So, you know, even as the company grows and different dynamics come into play, this company, specifically this office, is really one of the greatest things that has ever occurred in my life. And it really, what's in, what, what makes the, the company, what makes up the office, uh, yeah, there's chairs in it and there's assets that you would call bankable assets, but what makes it great is you guys. That's the beauty of the company. And I love the fact that people go full circle and come, like, I hate that they leave the company, but man, I sure love it when they come back. And I've watched that over and over again over the years, like, right, like an Aaron, I'm going to pick on you, like an Aaron Pearson. And right now, I mean, I don't think I'm putting anything out there that I shouldn't because he's been so vocal about it, but Jay Bentley coming back. And I, and I just watch the process and people, when I sit down with them privately, when I sit down with them, they say, well, I always ask, well, why are you coming back? They say, because my life is better when I'm here. Their life. Now I have this little tagline, right? And, and I didn't mention this one, Chris, when we were talking about taglines yesterday, but it's this, and that is, is that Everest, where business and life are elevated. And um, that's, that's some of the new stuff that's coming out with our culture video. Because it is. Because, look, in the end of the day, you guys will make plenty of money. And if you're not, you just got to learn part of the system, the structure, and the, the recipe for it. But in the end, what makes me happy is when I see pictures like of Justin Udy with his family, his kids. And those of you who have gotten close to Justin know that over the years as he's developed his business, um, you know, one of the most important things in him now is maybe not as much money as he earns, but is who he is as a dad, who he is as a father, who he is as a husband, who he is for, you know, life. Because in the end, you know, whatever you may believe, doesn't matter whether you believe in the hereafter or not, the reality, two things. One, I believe you're going to take it all with you, but not the assets, the physical ones. But I also believe that even if you don't believe anything after, you're going to leave something behind, and that's your legacy in the way in which you made a difference. So some way, somehow, you're going to leave something. You're going to either leave a wake of warning, holy crap, don't do that, like that guy. Or you're going to leave a wake that is basically awesome and amazing that people say, man, if I could just replicate what that person did, that's a great legacy. So whether it's that you take it with you or you leave it behind, one way you're going to do something that affects people and affects the legacy and the people that are on this planet. So just remember that this business, this company, everything about it is, it is far more than just simply the money. It's who you become in the process, right? It's the development from the inside out. It's all of these things that matter so much more than the dollars that are at stake. And the thing that's interesting is you become all the things that you need to become. You have all the reasons that build this foundation. Oh, man. It's amazing how happy you become because of the progress that it takes is taken on. So with that, unless anybody has any questions, I'm, I'm done. So any thoughts, comments? Thanks awesome. for being here. It's great to be with you guys. Awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh. oh, this is okay. Yeah, I know it is. Okay. Good. So, you're looking good.